asking for a friend, asking for a friend. Is there anyone left on social media that is not labeled toxic or a narcissist? Go to most sites and you will think these are the only two options you have to be on social media. At least if you want attention or you are bitter because of a past breakup or something that you're currently going through. These are the options that you have. Do you label people according to what you perceive them to be so other people will also stop liking them? I'm asking for a friend. Can you be on social media without being labeled a narcissist or toxic? Silence them. Silence people. Is that your mode of operation? After not watching network TV for more than 10 years and then suddenly watching, one thing you're going to notice is how loud the commercials are. And in them being so loud, they try to sell you something that you probably don't need because you probably don't need it. So that's why they're trying to sell it to you. You never see anyone trying to sell you water. You never see anyone trying to sell you air or up until recently, but the commercials have gotten louder and there have been studies to prove that they do this purposely so that in case you're in the other room, you can hear it. What are you being programmed to do? Asking for a friend. What commercials do you just say? I can't deal with this commercial anymore. I have to flip to the next one. Or will your smart TV even let you do it? Smart TV. There's a joke in there somewhere. Gerald Dickens, the great, great grandson of Charles Dickens does a great one man show where he plays more than 19 characters in the adaptation of a Christmas Carol. He goes all throughout the country or even other countries doing some of Charles Dickens best known works. If you have a chance to see it, please do. I recently saw him in Pennsylvania in the outskirts of Philadelphia and he said it was a treat for the audience. At least the MC did because it was his first performance after canceling a few shows because he had acquired a certain, let's say a certain thing that's in the air that kept everything locked down for a long time. But even then he still had some symptoms and he incorporated it into the show, which made it a great show. If you are interested in public speaking, I recommend that you watch what he does on stage. After you see him on stage performing, you will not take kindly to many other performances of A Christmas Carol, even though it was, I would say maybe an hour and a half, maybe a little more. It did not feel like an hour and a half. He's that talented. Notice the inflection of his voice the command, the presence that he has on stage, how he uses the fourth wall. These are all acting tricks and he teaches a master class just watching him on stage. I assume it also would be nice to see him perform in London. If you look at his website, just type in the Christmas Carol, Gerald Dickens, that's G-E-R-A-L-D, the great, great grandson of Charles Dickens. You'll see that he performs throughout the world and he just has it all memorized and he even breaks the fourth wall sometimes speaks to the audience but very rarely and when he does it he has such a presence on stage that it doesn't feel like you're watching saturday night live and they do it every two seconds no you actually shocked because he's able to break it and then jump right back into the script he must have done it thousands of times that's a master actor, I would say. And uh, one thing he did reveal was that he did not, um, as, as far as copyright, he didn't doesn't receive any money from the stories or the ad adaptations 
of Charles Dickens' work, even though he's related. Very interesting man. Uh, very interesting performance. It was, uh, yeah, it's something that maybe you'd want to make a yearly routine, even if you have a family. It's recommended for children 11 and up. But I think I saw children younger than that. Not too many in the audience. But if you want something to do around the holidays and want to jump right into the spirit of Christmas, why not? Or even just if you want, like I said, to get better at public speaking or want an acting class, go see him. Go see him. You won't regret it. Do you enjoy politics and agendas with your entertainment, with your sports, with your commercials, with your theater performances, with your movies, with your books, with your company? Or do you just want to go and see what you paid to see? Do you just want to go and be entertained and not deal with it? Are you a political person? Do you prefer things to be political? Do you prefer things to be correct? Do you prefer things to be politically correct? And if so, when do you know if you are receiving the truth? If a lot of the voices that you cut out are ones that you could be hearing and are not adapting or wanting to listen to someone else's way of thinking. How do you know if the information you're getting is correct? Because they're telling us from both sides, this is the right information, knowing that most people are not going to do their own research. How do you as a person like to receive information? Do you like to shut your ears? Do you like to silence voices or do you like to hear both sides and then formulate your own opinion? Can you blame it all on the media or can you blame it on your ears and what you're able to digest when it's in front of you? You already met the guy of your dreams, young lady, but you were too busy on your phone and didn't notice him. You pass him by. You use your phone as a crutch and you were ignoring him and you found something else on social media or perhaps your own reflection on your phone more interesting. Now you made it past your interaction, but it won't happen again, at least not for another 10 years. New age philosophy. You've already met the best woman of your dreams. And you didn't tell her because you were afraid of what your friends will think if they saw you with her. You were afraid of what your family, your own mother, your own father might think if you saw them with you. It might not happen again for another 10 years. If you change your opinion after 30 years, can you still be canceled? Is that something that worries you? Is it more important to express yourself or is it more important not to have the finger pointed at you? What, no one's gonna buy your product. Oh, well, no one's going to be your friend. No one's going to want to feel associate, feel like they're blamed when they come after you all at once. No one's going to want to be associated with you once they all come for you. But guess what? How about if they come for all of us? Then what do you do? Where do you go? Where are those voices that you silence that you might need at the moment? How important is being correct then? Who is they? Somewhere there's a parent calling their child to eat at a table 
and the child thinks that they're going to receive the food, the supper of the evening, of the night. And when they get to the kitchen, they realize they were tricked. They just were called upon to set the table, to bring the forks, to bring the spoons, to bring the knives, to bring the napkins, to bring the ice from the refrigerator or the ice box to set the table because the table was already there and you just had to set it or else you were not going to be allowed to eat somewhere in America somewhere in America this is happening it's not that the movies are interesting to you or that you don't like movies or that you don't like movies or excuse me or that you don't like music it's just that you might have been born in the wrong era, the wrong decade. If this sounds like you, I prescribe watching movies made before 1981, maybe even 1980. See the difference? A lot of them are available to watch on different platforms, on television, on the smart TVs. But a lot of them are not. See the difference and then come back and then realize, well, it's not that I don't like movies. It's not that I don't like music. It's that a lot of these forms of entertainment used to carry the weight of having to deliver some kind of message or at least say something, anything. And now they a lot of times don't. Give it a shot. Come back, tell me what you think, or write down in your own journal what you think about these things. Movies before 1980. 15 minutes every day for a long period of time, for an extended period of time, is better than no minutes every day for an extended period of time get started start where you are it's a big message that we deliver here we've been doing this for several years now and if you want your own personal session you can contact me and yes there's a fee for that the best things in life can be free but a lot of things you need are not. You don't need your cable company. You might need the internet. You don't need your cable company to entertain yourself, but you have to pay the bill at the end of the month. But if you just want to talk, just comment on the comment section. I'll do my best to reply. Good morning. How are you? How are you today? Before you do a lot of scrolling, a lot of watching on YouTube, on Facebook, just know that a lot of it is learning, but a lot of it is wasted time. Time for what? Time that you can get started on doing most of the things that you told yourself you'd start tomorrow on doing. How are you? It's a vague question. It's an annoying question if you've done doing a lot of things. But how are you and if you want to get specific think about how productive you were a lot of the depression you might feel is from a feeling of or from an understanding that you have not emptied the tank today not used the bathroom you have not reached your full potential in many areas of your life let's say you want to edit a whole bunch a video and you haven't got it done and it's for your own good or you need to learn a new language or you need to go to the gym or you told yourself you'd start but your mind tricked you out of it then a lot of that's going untapped resource of potential is not going to do anything but turn against you get started and just because I'm saying it doesn't mean that you have to do it. 
because I understand that a lot of times when you hear someone else seem like they're telling you what to do, that's exactly when you don't want to do it. You'll do it anyway. You know it's right. But that's when exactly you don't want to do it. But this is speaking to the person that wants to get started and might not live next to people who are necessarily influencing them or live next to someone that they think it's positive or have any positive people in their life or perhaps you just need a swift kick in the butt from someone that wakes up at 4 a.m. on a daily basis or darn near close to it. Get started. And if you hear a clanking, that's the chair banging into the table here. Exercise is discipline Exercise is discipline and resistance. Which one can you improve on? Discipline or resistance? That's what exercise is. Any, at any point in your life, you decide, I might need one and the other. But you want to get to the point where you're receiving enough resistance to get better. You're going to get to a place where some things are no longer challenging to you. I'm going to go online speaking about how men are terrible. After a while, that's not going to do anything for you. You want to get to a point where uh, some of these things that you feel you've digested, you got stronger because of it, and you learn to work with the opposite sex or work on something in your life enough that all these things are not an issue. You might get to a point in your life where just talking about politics every day are not going to cut it for you. But there are things that you can work on. Your discipline. You can get up early. You can go to the gym. You can work out. You can eat different food. You can prepare food differently. These are all things within your control. Discipline and resistance. And there's always little things that you can work on. There's always little things that I can work on. You just have to admit it to yourself and believe that you can conquer them. How are you doing? Here's a little advice if you have a problem getting started. They, whoever they are, whatever it is, might hate it when you do it, but they will love it when they do it. Just because many people are not going to like what you're doing doesn't mean what you're doing is wrong. Just because a lot of people might go against your stance, your opinion, it's not up to a team of people to like or understand what you're doing if you're not doing it for them. Ultimately, this is a very selfish Thing to do to make content to make art because ultimately it's for yourself right ultimately it's for yourself you feel a certain way when you do it you express yourself you feel a certain way when you do it you achieve something you're going to feel a certain way when you do it and more than feeling you're going to understand that you have proved to yourself something that you knew you can do, but didn't test it, or you didn't know you can do, and now you you understand differently. They will hate it when you do it, but they'll like it when they do it. So get started, whatever that is. Every interaction that you've had this week has either gotten you closer to your goal or further away from it. I'll say that again. Every interaction that you've had this week, think about it. Did it get you closer to your goal or further away from it? I'm talking about interactions over the holidays where you might have been talking about someone who can care less about what you have to say, but want to make it all about them. Are you in a place where your interactions are getting you closer or further. Can you divide the two? 
Do you need people to care about what you do? Also, do you care about your interactions? If they're something that where they're fruitful or for them to be uneven where you're constantly helping someone else, but you're getting nothing from it. But you can also decide that the reason that I'm helping someone else is because I'm getting something from it. And that thing you're getting from it might not exactly be helping that other person, but it's helping you feel like you're the person that's providing the assistance to this person who is less than you. So every hand up and the handout, you, every handout you get, who give, is not necessarily out of kindness, but it's not necessarily out to your detriment. But I want you to monitor what are your interactions like. Every interaction can be a positive one, but you can limit the time if it's not something that is in the right direction to your goal, a step closer to your goal. If you're going to someone and they're telling you about why you can't do it or why this is not possible, and it's someone that if you look at their life and you consider the source and you realize, well, this is someone who's never tested themselves or wanted to test themselves or even able to understand what you're doing, then maybe you want to stop telling that person everything. Maybe you want to focus more on yourself. Maybe your problem, your issue, is that you want everyone to like you. And boy, is that a hard and tough burden to carry around, wanting everybody to like you, because when everybody likes you, that's about as miserable as you can be. And when you think that things can be taken away from you, where you live, what you drive, because you are afraid of being unlikable, that's a tough feeling, but guess what? We have a lot of strong and independent people, so that shouldn't bother you, man or woman. They say that guys are supposed to be strong. Well, a lot of guys, when they're supposed to be strong nowadays, they just shrink, they cower. So get into the, the mindset that if you're going to be strong, don't only show it in the gym, show it in your lifestyle and the way that you move throughout the world, for to use a cliche. Excuse me a second, I'm still early in the morning. Thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, they flock to a little bit of celebrity news. They flock to Salt Bay's restaurant because they want the experience of Salt Bay, Salt Bay, what an interesting name, seasoning their food. I was going to say something else. Se seasoning their food. And a lot of couples go there and he does all these theatrics and he got famous doing that. And before that, he got famous because of the hard work he put into not only his food, but the theatrics that come along with it. He was able to make a name for himself. It's a person that when you Google him, you know what, even if you don't know him, you might say, oh, I know who that is. I didn't know that's who that was. He's been on TV a lot of times and with fame comes a lot of things, right? faster you come up, the quicker they, they want to make you fall. When you look at a lot of his uh, theatrics, there's nothing particularly interesting about it, but maybe there's nothing else happening in the area and that's the best thing to see. Well, he made a name for himself and he was successful at it. So people who go out on a limb like that, I don't like to put down if I don't have to. Because if he was in Salt Bay, no one would care. No one would care. So I guess he went to the World Cup and he made a spectacle. And this is media-driven media more than anything else. And uh, a lot of people don't like what he did. He was trying to take pictures with a lot of players, players who visited his restaurant too in the past. Except that he was, I guess, getting in the way of their moment. And... 
it turned into something else quickly into let's try to destroy this man's name and character and overnight because that's what the media does it's a cancel machine as soon as they quit the quicker you come up the you know they want to see you crash and they love a redemption story but only if it's funded by them so i don't know i can't get on this bandwagon and the story might be a couple days old by now but i like to take my time before i put things out there a lot of stuff that i've um, come to you with are things that a lot of times i've just sat with for a long time um, I don't see why they're coming after him. I don't see why he should have to defend himself. If he's going to apologize to anyone, it's, I don't know who that person would be, but he didn't offend me. They're trying to make him an enemy and that's what the media machine does. Not interested in the story that much. Didn't really watch the World Cup like that. I did see some highlights. Um, and again, if it's, uh, ploy to make us other restaurants more famous and make his restaurant go down and make him be uh, some kind of villain because he might look the part in certain people's eyes. No, I'm not going to fall for it. It's a big distraction. It's 2022, soon to be 2023. So expect anything that you see on the news, the news to be a big distraction. So I don't fall for those things. And many of the people that watch here and see me throughout the years watch here throughout the years they don't fall for those things they realize that this is exactly what's supposed to happen so salt bay just keep doing what you're doing and uh you know a lot of people who are coming down on you if they had the opportunity to get access or do the things that you were doing out there they probably do the same thing so just remember that Salt Bay, if you're watching Salt Bay, whatever his name, I'm sure he has a real name. You shouldn't be calling another grown man Salt Bay. Okay, so with that being said, I want to wrap it up here. I don't want to go for too long. This video is probably about 25 minutes. It's been a while since I did a long form video. And I might make them shorter, I might make them longer. But uh, a good thing about this is that you can clip a lot of the video, the long form videos into smaller videos and uh, have more content that way. And uh, a lot of the videos that you'll see a lot of the bigger YouTubers do or a lot of content creators do, they'll make like a three hour video and then they'll use the same video over and over. And that's a smart way to gain views and to monetize things. If you're still monetizable because you haven't been canceled or shadow banned or things like that. So let me know what you think in private, in person, online. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but I don't have a lot of things going on there. If you need to know, I'll post them out there. But you can just search, uh, see what you find. Tell me what you think. Uh, my background's in theater, it's in photography, it's in customer service, it's in technology, it's in a lot of things. So, uh, oh, by the way, if you're worried about going back to work next week, the best thing you can do is to work on your resume, work on your application, and uh, hand it in. Try it. Try different places that might have a better income, that might have a better atmosphere. And you don't know until you put yourself out there. It's easier now than it was a long time ago. You know, you don't have to go to the place in person. And, you know, where's the headquarters to IBM? And I have to find it and I have to go to the phone book. It's a lot easier. You could just do it online. But uh, those who you are new in the job market or just in the job that you dread, you just don't want to go back to it. Uh, you're, you like your paycheck when you see it, but something in it is not working for you. And ultimately, if you work in a job, what you want to do is not have that be your only source of income. You want to 
create something else that you can do on the side, even while you're doing that job, and put as much as you can in both. I'm not going to be one of these people to tell you to quit your job to just venture out on something else. It might work for some people. It might not work for you. There's a lot of ways. There's a lot of money out there. Make it, take it, break it. Don't cut corners. Don't compromise your integrity so much to the point where uh, you become unrecognizable to yourself and you lose your authenticity. So with that being said, create, 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 be effective. It's if the holidays are a tough time for you, the best thing that I can say is focus more on your work, not so much on what everyone else is doing. It might look like the whole world is having a party. They're in, I don't know, some country you've never been to. Everyone has a bigger house than you have, a better car, better women. If those are the things that you want, that's fine. If you are comfortable where you are, fine too. If you're comfortable with going to work every day, that's fine. But always be looking to better yourself, better your surroundings, improve your surroundings, and improve your thoughts. And the best way you can do that is by, from my experience, is to exercise, to hang around people that are willing to see outside of yourself, themselves, see better in their life and your own. People that are willing to get started. And admit it, those people many times are not around you. People who are not scared, people who are not afraid to shake the boat, people who are willing to create every single day. Listen, art is very important in society, but when done right, right now, a lot of art looks the same because that's by design. But if you can do a common thing in an uncommon way, as I've heard it been said, then you can make whatever is dead about art come back to life again. Don't give up on yourself. I don't know you, but you might want to try it a little more. And if you're going to quit, make sure it's not because you have compared yourself to someone else so much that you believe that what you have and what you've worked on is not enough. And with that, I'm gonna say, take on the morning, take on the day. Bye.